Well, next up, we're changing gear or theme to talk about using technology for monitoring. And this is our only presentation regarding technology and monitoring, and it might be just the kickoff for a whole new set of presentations some other time. Yeah, but probably do some jumping jacks. Yeah. But, but we're, you know, at the NEP, at the Charlotte Harbor NEP, we're just really excited about this project. So, great, great. Kathy, you take it away. Thank you. And again, I'd like to thank Marin and Judy and Lisa for inviting me here uh, to talk about this. I was asked to talk about using GIS technology to uh, map oyster habitat in Sarasota County waters. And uh, first of all, this is sort of have it has evolved. It, when, when I started the project, it, we weren't using GIS technology. It has evolved into using it, so um, which has really made it a lot easier. And I'll talk about that as we go along. Uh, what we are doing is we are um, what I'm going to be talking about is oyster habitat mapping. Uh, I'm going to cover a little bit of oyster conservation. Uh, why oysters are important. A lot of you probably already know that, but I'm just going to run through that. Uh, some historical data that we have. Our mission, strategy, mapping methods, um, habitat categories, and what we're going to be doing next. Let me move a little bit closer. Um, I really enjoyed Jim's talk this morning because he couldn't have said it any better that all habitats are of equal importance and that you can't just take one habitat and it, it exists in isolation. All of these wonderful habitats are sown or woven together with a delicate strand of water. And uh, just as conserving natural lands is vital to maintaining a high level of environmental health and quality of life, for these reasons, uh, uh, preserving our natural landscapes, our native flora and fauna, and protecting our endangered and threatened species, um, as well as uh, having green space and open space and uh, uh, keeping our wildlife corridors. Um, conserving the oyster habitat is very important for many of these same reasons. Um, they're essential, essential components of a healthy marine system. And uh, there are very uh, many conservation efforts and restoration es efforts already for oysters. A uh, great deal of work has been done in the Chesapeake Bay region, um, the Natural Resources Conservation Service in the Northwest. And the Nature Conservancy is really, uh, on top of things, they are very, very much so interested in oyster restoration and conservation. They, work, they are working throughout the uh, Atlantic seaboard, through the Gulf states, and they're also are working with the CHNEP. The Nature Conservancy has uh, set the Charlotte Harbor area as a high priority area for oyster restoration. And uh, Judy and Lisa and, and the CHNEP are actually in the process of writing a, co a comprehensive oyster restoration plan. We're talking about the eastern oyster, and uh, oysters, as many of you know, are very, very important because uh, they are adapted to a wide range of env environmental conditions. They uh, pr provide essential habitat and a food source for many, many organisms. They improve water quality through fil filtration. Uh, there have been several schools of thought, but I have read several of the studies that claim that an adult oyster can filter anywhere from 30 to 60 gallons of water per day. Uh, so they remove a lot of uh, pollutants and sediments uh, from the water and create uh, uh, water clarity for seagrass beds. They also dissipate wave energy and protect shorelines, uh, uh, protect the bottom sediments. And they are also very delicious, and people enjoy eating them. Uh, environmental factors that are relative are important to the, their success and their proliferation. They are, as I said, eurotopic. They are adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions. But there are optimal conditions which they really s survive and thrive and proliferate. For instance, they have an optimal sal salinity range of around 10 to 28 uh, points per thousand. Uh, they have an optimal te temperature range uh, where, they, uh, where they settle and they, uh, and they thrive. They need a steady, steady uh, current that's not too heavy, um, not too very turbulent. 
and uh, which can provide them oxygen and food and actually carry away some of their the feces in the, in the sediments. Other environmental factors are the substrate. They require a firm, fairly firm substrate. Uh, they need some culch material to, for the spat to settle, and usually it's other oyster reefs, of course, are the most um, uh, obvious ones. Um, and they need an area that's limited, uh, has limited predation and disease. So what is the issue? Um, oyster structure has been identified as the most imperiled marine habitat in the world. Uh, studies have been done, experts assert, that over the past two centuries, 85% of our oyster uh, populations and habitat have been lost. And uh, some of the reasons are, of course, intense over-harvesting and little restoration effort, uh, decline in estuarine water quality, changes in salinity regimes, uh, regimes and uh, extensive um, development along, shoreline, ha along the shorelines and hardened shorelines, of course, and also disease and predation. Um, I was tasked with uh, the opportunity uh, to decide or map the oyster habitat in Sarasota County waterways. And there has been some historical data, as we can see. I'm not going to name all of these, but as you can see, uh, certain agencies have done some work at, in mapping the oysters, but um, it's, it's not complete. And it also didn't, um, most of them did not include our uh, coastal or tidal creeks. So our, our mission is to locate and identify all types of oyster habitat in the county, all the bays, and into the creeks. Uh, develop current baseline maps of all these habitats, and uh, we wanted to document the upstream extent of the habitat, uh, and then to use the data to analyze for uh, problem areas and maybe identify potential restoration sites. Uh, we also wanted to develop effective uh, oyster mapping methods. What I did was, uh, when I was tasked with this, I did look into some efforts, and I modeled ours after some work from the uh, FWRI did in the Tampa Bay, Cockroach Bay area. Uh, we wanted it to be cost effective, and we ought, because we were going to use uh, sta uh, staff. We didn't have any money to spend. We didn't want this to go on for uh, years and years. We wanted to get something that was uh, done in a few years. Uh, as I said, I did mo model the categories after the FWRI mapping efforts. And we decided uh, to begin with the creeks. I thought it might be a little bit simpler than uh, going uh, through large areas like the bay. So I started there and then uh, went to the bays after the creeks. And I've developed a methods manual. and then we're going into GIS analysis. You can't really see this, but this is the uh, Cockroach Bay study, and I'm, I did to choose uh, some of their habitat codes, but I'll go over those uh, quickly later on. Um, it's not easy. You can't just decide, get up one morning and decide, well, I'm just going to go map some oysters. Uh, you need some uh, really good conditions, such as uh, negative low tides, which only occur during the uh, late fall into the winter and early spring. Uh, you need to get out early. You have, uh, it's best to go out on a, the last hour of an outgoing tide. And you have maybe a five or six hour window to map the oysters. Uh, you really need good, good weather, a shallow draft boat, because uh, especially up into the, the creeks, uh, the water, of course, at negative low tides is very shallow. It might be only one to two feet. And you need some really good uh, boat captains. I had two that uh, I have, have gone out with me, and they need to be able to maneuver that vessel in these uh, shallow areas and in tight conditions. So mapping the creeks uh, the old way, um, but this is before we had the GIS technology. And so what I did was I took the um, uh, ARC map and I printed out shorelines of all of the creeks. I laminated, uh, we, used, we did 17 county creeks, and I, they were on a legal size paper, and I um, um, had so I could connect them together as we went along, map the shorelines. Some of the um, maps had only the one shoreline. Some of the creeks were narrow enough that I could put both the shorelines on the, the uh, map. And so we would go up one side of the creek and then down the other. Um, I would take a uh, permanent marker and draw 
physically on the map and put the codes as to what the, each type of habitat was. And then when I got back to the office, I had to open up ArtMap, and then I had to go in there and use the editing tool and draw it all over again. So I was doing double work, which, which just made it a little bit longer. And uh, in developing this, I did develop the hab habitat codes. I'll run over a couple of them. They um, used the, um, this isn't really working so well. These, uh, we did map seawalls and riprap. We had, oh. oh. There are different types. We use uh, uh, shell, scattered shell, clumps, uh, reef, mangrove aprons, mangrove root, root oysters, and then seawall, riprap. Um, what we did find as we were mapping is that in the absence of a suitable substrate, especially along in some of the creeks and canals, that oysters really do like to settle and uh, thrive on seawalls. This is just an example of my shoreline map, one of the shoreline maps, and you can see, you may not be able to see, that I draw everything, all the lines, the reefs, and then uh, uh, note the codes on each one of these. And these are an example when I did go back and I put them in art map. These are just some examples. And these are the, this is the original data. And my GIS analyst, I'll talk about him in a few minutes, is converting um, these to another map. Now the new way. Uh, when I got done with all the creeks and then uh, there was a uh, time that um, we waited about a year and then it was time we decided, well, we better get out into the bays. And a colleague of mine who was a GIS expert himself suggested I had gotten these uh, rugged tablet computers and uh, they were using these for some seagrass work and so John said well you know why don't you use this for mapping oysters for finishing up the oyster mapping in the bays and he said basically what he did is he downloaded all the maps into the computer and I all I had to do was take it out into the field and um, actually use the editing tool and draw directly on to, into ArcMap and put my codes in, in the, the field uh, boxes. And then all we had to do is when we came back is to come back and download it. So that just eliminated the double work. So it's really saved us a lot of time. Uh, one thing that we did do is when we were out in the base, we did add a few, a few of the habitat codes. We uh, found that there were a lot of oysters on pilings and docks. And so I added some codes there. And then we also talked about, well, we, we weren't going to do, um, we couldn't spend the time to do presence and absence and determine, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, percent live or anything to determine the health, the health of the reefs in, in the areas. But we did want to kind of get an idea of what was there and uh, the condition. So I did develop the codes for zero is mostly dead, one is a mixture of live and dead, and then two is mostly live. So we're using those codes now in the bays. And this is an example of the bay map, which is pretty much uh, like what we have for the creek maps, only this was crea uh, created directly in ArcMap uh, on the computer. Uh, we now have um, t turned a lot of the data over to a GIS uh, analyst, and he is developing a classification system to help sort of quantify what we have found. We, are not, uh, we aren't uh, haven't finished the bays yet. I'll get to that in a, in a second. We are, we did, we've done all the creeks, and we've done about half the bays, and we still have to finish the bays. So he uh, is developing a system, to qual a classification system, based on oyster type, uh, which are the shell, clumps, reef, root, and aprons. Uh, covers, coverage is scattered or not scattered, because a lot of the clumps, you might have an, a big, wide area of scattered clumps, or scattered shell, which, is mo which those are mostly dead. Abundance is my codes, for instance, seawall one, which was on one of my other slides. Uh, the one is um, a code for the size of the band on the seawall, for instance, and I'll show, the, uh, show you a photo in a little bit, that um, most of the seawalls had, uh, they uh, occurred in the tidal range. So some of the seawalls were very, the bands were very narrow. The seawall one is about six, about six inches. Then two is six to 12 inches, three is uh, 12 to 18 inches, and then four is uh, over 18 inches. So uh, we're using that for abundance. And then 
um, the thickness, and then uh, he's bu doing some buffering. This is some, the GI work, the technical work that he is doing. And when he gets done, he'll be able to determine the acreage, the total acreage in the county, and then he can take out each creek and say, well, there's so many, so many oysters, so many acres of or oysters in each creek, or Sarasota Bay, or Little Sar Sarasota Bay. And these are some of the categories I was talking about. Uh, for instance, these are the see all ones, and you, as you can see, it's a very narrow band, but they're, they're pretty healthy, but they're, uh, it's just a very narrow band. See all two is just a, a little bit thicker. Uh, threes are, even, you know, the band's even higher. Here's some on some pilings, a nice big clump, and some uh, seawall threes in the background here on that seawall. Uh, we only found seawall four oysters over two feet. That's in Godfrey Creek in a canal. Um, we have some along riprap, which I'm treating riprap and seawall. The codes are the same. It's the, all the codes are very consistent. But we did find as, sea, as riprap did not provide as good a habitat for the oysters as seawall did for some reason. And we're not really sure why this ha is occurred, but... Um, Somebody brought up that maybe predators are hiding in the nooks and crannies of the riprap and, and they catch the spat before they can settle. Uh, mangrove root oysters and then different types of reefs. There's one string reef, mangrove, another mangrove apron, uh, scattered clumps and shells, scattered shell. So what's next is we do need to complete the bay mapping uh, we're looking, I'm looking to complete it in this fall and hopefully by early spring or, or, or the winter. Uh, Jim is working on the GIS analysis and he's almost done with all the classifications that he needs to do. So he's going to kind of be waiting on me to finish. And then he will finish with all the analysis, hopefully um, in the spring of next year, uh, we, will, uh, we will write a report and then uh, a detailed report on what we have done. And uh, we're participating in the CHNP Southwest Florida Oyster Working Group, and I uh, hope to participate with other working groups and also share our methodology um, in case other areas would like to do the same type of oyster mapping. And I'd just like to acknowledge my two uh, captains, Rennie Janneman and John Perry, and James Grimes is doing the analysis. So uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, we're just really jealous of your oyster maps and <laughs> want one for a whole study area. So what are you doing the next five, six years? <laughs> That's no? what I was thinking. It's like, yeah, you, you guys need help with mapping. Maybe I should come down and help at least get you started on it. <laughs> so, ah, very good. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I'm with the Southwest Florida Planning Council mm -hmm. intern. Hi. Um, is there any historical data, like condition index, perkensis levels, to indicate the actual health of the oysters? Not that I have found. I mean, there may be something out there, but the, I think the data is pretty scattered out. But I, I don't know anybody that's done any uh, studies on the diseases. Uh, FWRI may have done some, the um, FWC or the Marine Research Center, but I'm not sure. That would be a good thing to know. It's amazing how much we don't know. Exactly, exactly. Additional questions? Okay, well, thank you so thank much, you. Kathy. Very exciting project.